Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to this uh, expert table of the participatory group, this uh, collaborative group between the Madrid Town Hall and UNED regarding public participation. Today, we're delighted because we have here um, people from Buenos Aires who will explain and talk about a participatory project in the coast of Buenos Aires. And it's great having them with us because though they are one of the first ones that, are that uh, participated in our group and we have so much to learn from all the participative processes and their experience. It's very, very interesting because we've seen participatory for children, participatory processes, this type of participation in different fields and about different topics that is being carried out in Buenos Aires. Also with new techniques, with imaginative processes that are also adapted to the realities I think that we can learn a lot from them. So we've got one hour and a half ahead of us to share with them. So I don't want to occupy much more of your time. And well, you already know more or less the dynamic of these expert workshops. So the specialists speak about their own cases, but Obviously, we can raise our hands at any moment. We can ask questions in the chat and the participatory group will pay attention to the chat. So you can just pay attention to the presentation and then you can give an answer. Some people can't are connecting, but they cannot participate live. So you can they can just write in the chat. So. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for your great effort, for your preparation and for being part of this initiative. The floor is yours. Thank you, Marta. So I'm in charge of the general direction of citizen participation. And we always like to say that in the government of the city, this region is in the communication secretary, so it's got this value itself and our participatory projects and uh, our anchorage in terms of being close to the people and not just thinking about the project itself, but also to think about the communication, how people find out about it how they find out about the processes that we're carrying out. And Maka will speak more about it because she's the leader of participation, citizen participation, as well as Juani, who's in the following up. But I think it's very, very interesting sharing with this group and is trying to, we, we will, speaking about the with the team we were speaking about what we want to bring to this table what we want to share with the teams working in the same topic in different parts of the world and we what we thought added a value it was apart from the results of this participatory process is one of the ones we're doing in buenos aires and we've been doing it for a long time and bring what we've learned, tell you what we've learned, the difficulties we've had, the challenges where we can find conflicts. Because we're very aware that citizen participation is vital to go through conflict together because these conflicts happen in every country, in every city of the world about certain topics and about different projects. So we wanted to bring in this little question that we've been learning and that we always try to to learn more and then transform it, use it for other participatory process because they have similarities, they have differences because of the different populations. In Buenos Aires, it's very diverse. 
it's divided in different areas the problems the worries the wishes are very different from one area to another and we always dive into this learning this is also useful for the next uh, participatory process we may have in the future so this is what we wanted to share with you today we want to have um a nice session please feel free to ask any questions this is the idea sharing this space that i think it's a brilliant it's a brilliant idea and the more we share with one another the more we will enrich ourselves so i invite you to dive into this project and please do not hesitate to ask questions If there's uh, something else, please do tell us. So now the team will speak more about it. Thank you, Juan. Thank you for your words. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm joining uh, what Juan was saying. Well, good evening here in Buenos Aires. Good morning there in Spain. For us, it's very important to have these spaces because they allow us to collectively reflect about how we can incorporate citizen participation in the design and implementation of uh, public policies. In this case, we're going to present the participative process that was the uh, implementation by DG, and they was implemented in June and July 2022. But uh, we know many people here joined the workshop on the community recently. We think that it's important to highlight our responsibility as an area, who we are and why are we are doing this type of processes. Well, we're the area of the government of the city that assesses and or coordinates all the government in the city and it coordinates different participative processes that will allow to improve public policies, obviously with the intervention of the required areas of our of our city. As I said, we got participation as resor fundamental resources. So why do this? For the um, active listening of the neighbors and the link that's made through trust to open the management to the citizen to innovate in different public policies using their collective intelligence, like it's uh, the case of this participative process to be a coster and to solve different types of conflicts through dialogue. Now, if you want, we can get started with the presentation. Having done this introduction about DG. Um, I think we need to go one slide before here. This one, this one is. Sorry, it's it's moving technical problems. Buenos Aires and its beaches. So everyone can see the slide, right? Yes. So let's go back in time. This this picture is from the fifties in Buenos Aires, and to so everyone can have the context to speak about the different ways of using the river. It's been just for a few years. So at the beginning of the 20th century, the city of Buenos Aires had a, like a kind of a spa, a town spa. It's in the a neighborhood of Fort Madero in Buenos Aires. And in this sector, thousands of people, thousands of citizens uh, attended when it was hot to relax, to refresh themselves. In the 70s, like it happened in many other countries, uh, well, the pollution of the river brought uh, restrictions to use uh, this uh, river. And 
there was a natural reserve that is what is called the South Coastal Era. So knowing this, obviously thinking about uh, the use that it was made a few years ago, this project of BA Costa wants to get this link back with the citizens and the river. So the citizens can actually enjoy this river. Next slide, please. So what's this project about? So the BA Costa project was part of a um, full plan of the regenerating the coast of Buenos Aires that had the, an effect in 25 kilometers of the coast to rebuild this link and get back the use with the Costanera of the Plata River. BA Costa is a big project, but it's uh, it has micro projects in it, like um, the Morial Amia Square, Young District, uh, Ecological Reserve, and Urban Coast. So um, we could say these projects have something in common, some characteristics in common, which is the search and trying to recover these areas that are not being used anymore and we want them to transform we want to transform them in different places so the citizens can go there and to achieve this goal of linking it linking the neighbors with the buenos aires cost yes just a question very short question buenos aires itself from a legal perspective, what type of entity is it? I mean, is it from, so all of this part is part of the same area or is it not? Well, Buenos Aires has got what we call um, communes and the neighbors, neighborhoods that are like what we could call little town in different um, parts. So these cost, uh, has different communes um, and different neighborhoods. So um, it's around three or four communes, which are like little towns, and seven, eight neighborhoods, the ones that fall part of the Plata River. Yes, I would like to add that the Plata River also goes through other different villages that are next to Buenos Aires. But this project is just in, in what it is considered to be the Buenos Aires city. The other villages, the Santa Lopez and Isidro, that they all have their coast as well, and it's the same river. Exactly. Okay. So like Juan was saying, as speaking about citizen participation, we had many challenges. For example, having certain conflicts or certain ideas coming from different groups. And we know these groups uh, in some groups, it's common that when there is an urban intervention, in general, there's a bad idea, but there's a bad connotation from many people. So it was imperative to have a public policy and being able to inform all the groups, all the organizations about this project and inform them what it was about, to be able to manage uh, with uh, the audience and with the citizens. So following it, and here we find the organizational areas, for example, the Urban Anthropology the General Direction, that's the organizer of the project. So. We're gonna speak about what they do. So this one, urban anthropology, has the perspective of the neighbors in the government projects. Through participation. Um, 
So we find this uh, general direction as a great partner within this uh, participative pro uh, process. Then transport secretary, that's coordinator, uh, the public uh, works that are being made, the ones we can see and the ones we cannot. And then the general direction for citizen participation, that would be us. And you already know about our responsibilities. So what we did was to cooperate with the project, opening participative spaces with neighbors, children. We'll speak more about this later. And here, something that's important as well that we should bear in mind is that there is another challenge to work with these two areas and how we create a culture, a participative culture, not just with the neighbors of Buenos Aires, but also with uh, in, in, in on the inside of the government of Buenos Aires, working in a cross sectional way and in, in with integrity within the government of the city. As you can imagine, we had uh, different uh, people that were thinking different things about how we can organize the ideas, the thoughts, the interests of the different areas that are part of the project. But uh, at the end of the process and of the project, the dynamics and the proposals of participation had no problems. Um, it was quite the opposite. We got quite good results. If we go to the next uh, slide, and then um, Sofia Calveta will speak about the project itself of uh, the project of BA Costa. Hello, you can hear me well? Okay, good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good evening. And as Juan was saying, working in collaboration with the different areas, we were designing the project that we'll be speaking about. And I have a triple goal. We have a triple goal because we wanted to inform, know, and then get ideas. So inform about the project, solve the doubts we may have, getting to know the experience of the neighbors, and then creating ideas and proposals with that. So it was a triple goal that had five specific goals, give information, know about the frequency and the use of the river, identify needs and preferences of the neighbors, explore wish, expectations and ideas, and definitely, and finally, sorry, define ideas and proposals to get improvement uh, along with uh, the neighbors. In order to carry out this triple goal, then we design and we needed to bear in mind the uh, historical framework, the theoretical framework as well. So we could see the different areas in the government of the city. Then we were working in a cross-sectional way with the, with the citizens, the different neighbors that we mentioned to improve the relationship and improve the link. So this, like this, we had diagnosis, in 2020 and 2021, we have observations in the coast. We also have interviews with specialists and organizations. There were surveys as well to get to know what they were doing. And we were also mapping. So there were different, uh, different ideas, different things that were done in order to carry out this project in the best way possible. The last one was thinking of the prior part of the river, what had happened before, the background. So before the project, we could get to know the relationship between the river. We got we reached more than 400,000 people through social media and we received many many answers and we saw there was a wish there was an interest to participate in this topic 
in order to implement uh, this uh, policy the best way possible. So they could express their concerns, their interests. So we thought it would be very important to highlight that the diagnosis was very important. Oh, everything we had done before in order to have an assertive uh, policy. Yes, sorry, Sophia. The thing we see the last, this opinion relieving, is that a survey? It would be, yeah, it's kind of a survey. It's a survey that we do to the neighbors. We do it with mails or through social media. They can participate there. Speaking about the problems they see. Okay, thank you. It's because there's a word we don't use here in Spanish and in, in, in Spain. And as I was saying, we go to the next slide. Here we can see the background as well. And thinking about our theoretical framework. So for these, we need to think in what stage can we participate, can we put the participation of the processes? So when designing and diagnosis of our alternatives that we can incorporate, what consequences would have? So because we're a cross-cutting area, a cross-sectional area, we work in these processes. The effects are non-binding effects because then there's some other area, the ones that the one that implements and carries out this application. Regarding extension, who is it good for? Well, we want to work with all the citizens to reach different perceptions, different uses. But as we will say, we wanted to have access to wishes and interests of some specific uh, people. And we wanted to say how much power we could give to the citizens because we want to consult them. We want them to have information. We want them to be, be date. And the last one is the format. How do we want the neighbors to know about it? First, they need the information, of course, but then the expression and the development of their preferences. Finally, with everything we had done before, with this background we had, then we got the design that we call it the Participation 360, and it had eight meetings in total. There were different ones, so this is something we we did it virtually, some of them. So because the pandemic ta uh, taught us that we could do it like this, because some people could not go to the um, on-site meetings, so, but they could still be present. So that's why we had four and four. They also had different timings and doing it from, dif uh, from different ways, through email, through phone, social media. And then we thought, how are we going to execute them? So it also, who is it for? It's for the, all the citizens, of course, the different sectors that could be related and they could have different uses. So there were meetings in the south, in the center, in the north. But we also thought it, would, it was crucial to, to work with the, young people and with children speaking about their concerns their rights their use that we we really wanted to know about so this is why we have these eight meetings and two of them was for these target groups so if we move on you can see the dynamic we used they were divided by p by areas with adults and with youngsters. So there were four moments. The first moment was a presentation of the areas of the dynamic of the project of the uh, previous consultations. Then we have a more technical part to inform. We have uh, 
small projects that Hoinake was mentioning at the beginning that are part of that macro project, giving answers by part of the technical team that's in charge of this project. And then once all the information part was done, they could move on to of the diagnosis where we had working tables, as you can see in the picture. And from questions working with maps, then they there were different comments, suggestions about the use of the coast map to improve the this one, this same area, the one they would like to have in the different parts. And so we had these meetings and it was a consensus moment in order to work together and put our ideas in common. For children, we had different dynamics. The meetings here well, the, the the average age was six years old because we wanted to get to know their ideas, what they wanted. So we worked with uh, Design Island, memo tests with their images. And to be able to get to know a bit more because we wanted to know their wishes, the wish of these children because obviously in the future, they can use these spaces and they want to decide. We wanted to value their voices. Yeah. About the results we could see in these spaces to show them these, the results of the ideas of these brainstormings. We had uh, eight on-site maps because we had different tables in here in which we could see proposals regarding the services, the equipment, how we can manage the spaces and the different opinions, the transport to use these places and according to these areas, and according to the the different people, we had one proposals, different ones. And we also had a video of this participative process. B.A. Costa, a walk along the river. I don't know if you can hear it. Should I share my audio as well? Let's try again. Can you hear me? Can you hear it? Yes, we can. The 13th of June to the 22nd of July, get to know the project to reuse our river. It's really very interesting and it's going to raise the living standards of our inhabitants. What a wonderful proposal. It's very interesting. We shared so many ideas with, with the youth, with families, children, so that they could provide their ideas too. And we wanted to discover everything about this initiative. Thank you so much for being part of it. never-ending transformation. Oops. Ah. Wonderful. The idea behind the video was to show you a little bit of what we have done. It's a very brief uh, video. I'll share some more statistics with you. Once we designed, uh, we I wanted to share how we executed everything and the results, the outcomes of uh, this process and the lessons learned. We reached out to more than 530,000 people through social media, 33,000 people by mail, 91,000 people by phone, 4,500 people 
in the territory. So basically, we wanted to get people to know as much as possible about the the project. Uh, finally, there were more than 2,200 registrations and 250 attendees in total to the meetings. This is part of our communications effort to disseminate to as many people as possible, reaching out with information, and then we see the participation, well, and registration of a smaller group. But we want to train most of them. We consider that this is also part of the participation process. Obviously, later, less people, fewer people uh, register to the initiative. That's normal. We will answer the question on the chat uh, later. I wanted to share with you about the results and the lessons learned, the takeaways. I should say that it was a very transparent process, communicating with uh, many, many people. It all went out really, went really smoothly. We tried to be as efficient as possible, and we had a very big bond with other areas. We keep working with them nowadays. However, segmentation with the different territories, the idea of reaching the whole city, it didn't work as we expected. We should uh, split the city differently if we did it again. What happens is that the process was so broad. I mean, it was comprehensive, long term, so long term that in a way it ended up uh, feeling a bit abstract or unattainable for participants. Com in terms of communications, yes, we reached a lot of people, but it didn't work the way we expected because people felt it was unattainable or distant in the future. So this is a takeaway. We should transform it into micro projects, which is what we are currently doing. That way it's closer to the daily concerns and needs of the inhabitants of Buenos Aires. In this sense, I'm sorry for interrupting. I think that this point about uh, takeaways of participation processes and behind the scenes, this point about the micro projects as opposed to abstract broad projects uh, even if the micro projects are part of a very comprehensive one and even if they are carried out in 15 10 years for instance it's a uh, difficult uh, to get a lot of people interested in participating in processes that have more to do with a long-term vision or something that is a bit more abstract uh, like sophie was saying but at the same time, we felt it, that it was interesting. We've worked with many different areas. So in the first, that first uh, attempt, we wanted to share the long-term plan, our vision, our mission, because this make, makes uh, every project, micro project, part of the comprehensive project makes sense. As Sophie was saying, we were able to spread the word to many people. Many people learned, oh, this is the objective to disseminate, to get people to know about the plans. And we realized that when we were tackling the micro projects that were more tangible, that there was a movement. That's when we started to, to see project by project the devices or the ways in which it was better to include citizens. So I think it strengthened our concept of, well, when we go for a long-term project, for a long-term vision, we need, in terms of participation, we might see a decrease and then we see an increase of participation when something is directly impacting the daily lives of our citizens. Marta, I have a question. Marta, go for it. You might explain this in a while. I apologize if I'm anticipating things, but uh, or getting ahead of myself. The relationship between water and cities is something that uh, leads to many questions that come up uh, because there might be some conflicts. These are, I have specific 
questions. One is about the ownership of these territories. I mean, there, it's a very broad project. I suppose that there are parts of the of uh, the land, the territory that is public, state-owned, maybe private. But uh, how are you going to deal with these different types of owners? If the whole territory is state-owned, then there's really then it's straightforward. And I have a second question that is a bit less specific to participation, but it does have to do a lot with different participation models. I mean, if all the territory is state owned, there is no space for that much conflict. I intervene in what is part of the state and on behalf of our citizens to benefit them. But if there are other stakeholders, such as landowners, I mean, their presence might be a bit more controversial. How have you incorporated them if there were any? And that's about the ownership. I mean, I don't. I apologize again if I'm getting ahead of the presentation. I don't want to anticipate uh, other slides, but not in the participation part itself. I, I mean, your explanation was fantastic, but the problem, that conflict between macro and micro, we see this in workshops so much in participatory processes. The balance between micro projects where citizens are involved perfectly, very smoothly, and those big missions. My question was, I apologize because I am I got a bit distracted by my own remark about micro and macro. What was my question again? I remember now. Oh, I apologize. What was it? So I had a question about ownership and Again, I apologize. I mean, I'll ask this question later on if I remember what it was. Yes, it was about ownership. Oh, I've got it now. So what were the problems, if so, with the communication of what you were going to do, or maybe a debate of, well, I don't want this plan altogether. I mean, have you identified conflicts, specific conflicts in within these small micro projects, not only with the long term vision? Are there urban conflicts that participation has allowed you to solve? Because I mean, one of the keys of participation is not only to boost uh, communication, but also to disentangle knots, as we say. I'm sorry if I'm anticipating information that you are going to ask in uh, to answer, sorry, in following slides. No, that's a wonderful question, Marta. These two questions are related. The first one about ownership. Basically, the whole territory is a state owned. Okay. Well, actually owned by the government of the city. The conflict that we have seen was when we started announcing the project, it had to do with real estate uh, entrepreneurship projects that were going to happen in the city. Yes, they were transparent, etc. But that was the first conflict we encountered. There is a sector that is exploited today by some private stakeholders, maybe through tenders, but these lands might have been exploited already about the revaluation. Not everything is for people. Not everything is going to be a state owned uh, part of the city that they can use. No part of the uh, tendered land will remain as such. There will be a reconfiguration, reset up of the space. It will be reorganized. Thinking about specific spaces for people's leisure, that part will be state owned, but also the new, I mean, if you want a new relationship between people and water and other spaces will be kept for the development of retail commerce, uh, for restorations, venues and uh, different ways of enjoying the whole bank. One of your questions was about the length of the riverbank uh, 25 kilometers, sorry for interrupting. Oh, thank you, Maka. So 25 kilometers of riverbank, it crosses the city from one uh, end to the other. 
this has a lot to do with the last thing that the girls were saying, which was very interesting. It's about the conflict, macro, micro. I mean, this uh, generates a certain concern to all of us when we are getting into participation processes. It's like a utopia to share the vision in the long term, but sh we should debate as a participation facilitators this question itself for us people who want to are people really interested in sharing their time with us? If not, we're, I mean, we're calling people to join virtual and face-to-face -face meetings where obviously relationship with space-time, I mean, this changed a lot after the pandemic. We are asking them to spend one, two, or even three hours if they have to commute to get there. It's even worse to talk about a vision. Well, that is the platform we're providing them. We can organize meetings, send them emails, let them know that the government of the city, this particular government, is thinking about public policy that have to do with the long term, with the reuse of uh, water and many other current affair issues. We, it's something that we need to debate among us. What are the best mechanisms to rethink visions and the best way to integrate participation in micro projects or short term things that are more daily linked to the people the inhabitants of daily lives for instance a square a park next to my house a specific street that i cross every day uh, many people are willing to spend time get involved when it's about this and time is, I mean, time is very valuable, so they want to be part of the process when it's in short term for a short term project. How do we integrate them for visions and macro, macro projects, long term projects? It's a bit of a utopia. I mean, we want to, we, do we want them to join us in the do we want to listen to their needs from the start? And how do we do things in a more realistic manner? Thank you very much. I would like to show you how we followed after we we concluded with some takeaways. Let me tell you about the actions and measures that are still under development. At the end of 2022 in November, about uh, one of the areas of the 25 kilometers of river bank, we carried out meetings, consultations about the Carrasco Park. And this year we have started to visit workspaces like in Vega, Parque Salguero, so that uh, people can feel how tangible, how real, how close the projects are to their lives so that they can fully understand exactly what is going to happen if they are participating, where the impact will be felt. And uh, we have taken into account for every project, every micro project, so to speak, the cases, the moments, the stages we should where we should encourage participation and who to target. I mean, all, we always want the most uh, people to participate so that it is more effective when we're given that we are going to completely transform the Buenos Aires uh, Bank, the Buenos Aires Coast. So you were saying that it's important important to start participation in the diagnostic uh, phase, not when things have already been planned, defined, and designed. That's always our target. That's always our spirit as a directorate. And it has been uh, about uh, taking citizen participation culture to citizens. Uh, we need to rethink administration's approach uh, People, there are so many people in government too. There, there are so many interests. Uh, so it's in interesting. With the passing of years, as we as we check that our citizen participation is healthy, not only for public policy but also for democracy, that these very important areas, like the secretariat executing work, the 
anthropology and uh, urban development uh, s department so that they the fact that they come to us to work together with the citizens, that's a huge success. The fact that these uh, projects are so long may, means that we started talking to our citizens in 2020. It's 2023 and we are still in the same project. So it's not, we don't want to lose momentum. We want real time, a continuous participation. It's very telling of how successful and how much of a victory this is. And with this, we would like to thank you for listening to us. Let's move on to a Q&A. We see many questions on the chat. Why don't we move on? But anyway, thank you for attending. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention. That's it. Thank you so much, Sofia. There was a question by Cristina that you didn't answer and that was very revealing. It was about my remark initially about the difference that sometimes we see with different countries and cities in the world or even cities in Argentina about where the citizen participation and approach uh, general directorate is and whether what, what ministry or what department it belongs to. Participation processes are very important to us. The government culture is a key part. We want to involve all of the government areas to make them part of this culture to gain spaces. I mean, because governments are so broad, so huge, and they serve 3 million inhabitants in Buenos Aires, people who enter Buenos Aires from a different cities to commute, for instance. So it was a challenge to find our own space within the organization and to start showing how healthy the high quality of our citizen participation in terms of public policies. But apart from this target that we set ourselves uh, eight years ago when we created this uh, DG and we imposed this culture or where we define this culture, we want people to get to know what we are doing. We want them to get to know about the participation processes that we are involved in. This led to two matters. It democratized, undoubtedly, the possibility of participating. We provided more tools to communicate, to disseminate, because the more tools of communication, the more people we reach, the more target audiences we reach. We knew that we could call them with a landline. I don't know if you call this, uh, but anyway, we could call this senior inhabitants through a landline in Buenos Aires. That's the case. If you called this way, we could approach them properly. A part of the city, they use the uses the, the social media, but we wanted to provide all age groups the possibility to participate. Today, we see a younger uh, target audience, so we reach out to them through maybe mails. We also learned that going out to the territory to disseminate about the activities that could maybe reach a different type of a group, target group, or that we could use basically different tools. What we do for every participation process carried out is to measure. One of the questions we received is, how do you measure? How do you get the figures for participation? Every participation process is followed by a process where we analyze how many people joined, how many people registered, and how many people effectively participated in the end. We, that's what I call it. It's the tip of the iceberg, the number of participants and registries. What you don't see under the underwater, as they are part of the iceberg, was the amount of people who got to know about the participation process. As many people 
uh, reached out to through an email. We look at the figures. For instance, if we want to uh, get to our inhabitants about a square in neighborhood, we know we know the data about impact, about how many people opened the email. Same thing with social media. Any platform that we use uh, will tell you how many people saw the post, saw the ad. Same thing for the territory. We have a group of people who are disseminating about activities in the street. What we try to do is to disaggregate the figure and understand how many people stopped to talk to our staff and how many didn't. Same thing with the telephone. We signal a certain number of um, telephones. We have the figures about how many people answered. We write down all of this and then we build this iceberg to really fully comprehend, well, how many people got involved, read about it, how many people registered, showed a specific interest in registering to participate, and how many people joined the event itself. This is the way we analyze and we the way we reflect about, I mean, I don't know if success is the right word, but the success of the participation process, how many people wanted to join the process. And later, undoubtedly, it helps us in our relationship and in the cultural change that we want people to perceive. They want them to understand that we are opening up exchange spaces, participation spaces, possibilities to participate, to design the public policies of your city. That's a way for us to get more and more involved as a participatory government with them. We need to spread the word to people, but also to create an interesting participation culture we start to implement the possibility. We tell people, if you want to, you can be a part of public policy design. That all citizens say as well to build. It was so important in every process carried out to keep that communication so we can Para darle... make, get people to participate in micro, micro projects and initiatives to expand the scale, to emphasize its importance for the different government areas. It was very important for us to communicate. I mean, once we conclude the participation process, we need to disseminate the project so that people get to know the project. So yes, we are working in partnerships. It's important to understand it uh, this way and to understand why in a way we set the figures that way. It's not about the number of people who participate only. Now we need the full iceberg. I don't know if I was clear. I have a question. I have a doubt. I apologize, but uh, I would like to know what would happen if I did it in the City Council of Madrid. And this leads to a legal question. How do I find a database that you use to create this? How do you spread the word? I mean, the figures were outstanding. I found it shocking, but I don't have that ca capacity. I cannot use people's data that way. We have a data protection regulations. Yes, I know there's social media that we have dissemination campaigns, but they are not mailings and the phone calls. I mean, how do you do all of that? We're talking about thousands of people. Was it 500,000 for mail lists, uh, for your mail list? Do you have a database or where is it coming from? Cristina, this was a database that we started working on uh, through social media. Increasingly, maybe there's a few restrictions of two communication and social media. The platforms uh, manage data. And then people started to register in different parts of the city. Within this, there was a possibility to tell them about the next participation process. You were building up the database. This is the result of many, many years of efforts. I'm talking about more than eight years working this way. Getting to 
understand the interests of people, the, looking at the registries. Uh -huh. Sí, ese es un poco el resultado. Vale, vale, gracias. And I'm just sharing the outcome. This is linked to Luis's question in the chat about the coordination of this esta coordinación eh, y creo que tiene que ver con esto, con el recorrido de ocho años de, de una gestión que tiene como lineamiento de nuestra jefatura, digamos, la participación ciudadana, es decir, es una política pública y es all about public participation. Entonces, desde ese lugar, eh, eh, la articulación... From this point onwards, we facilitated the working with the areas for the past eight years, from the DG sharing the citizen participation culture, looking at the area so that they can see firsthand how we can add value to public policies, how to legitimize everything. So that the transport secretary and public works and urban development, including the anthropology direction, to come to us uh, because they have a big project, this big comprehensive plan. And we want to make participation from the zero, from the start, from this vision, and to keep participating in uh, projects contained there. De este gran proyecto. The initiative of this big project is interesting because it comes from the competent uh, areas. So in this regard, you have highlighted your own value so that the other areas for this project and others, they come to you, right? They come to you to work on participation. How fantastic. Yes, exactly. And this is wonderful because I believe that Obviously, we are a very active area. We are fully aligned with planification, etc. What is going to be done? We see job opportunities, but uh, what's happening increasingly for the past eight years is that the areas know us, and because we have had positive outcomes and have benefited public policies, they get closer to us, telling us, this is a project I have, and having achieved this is wonderful. In this case, I, this was such a huge project. So yes, they approached us because these are areas that we have worked with in other projects. So uh, it was fantastic. They are our partners now, strategically. I have another question. Thank you for the answer. It's very useful because for us in the city council administrations that are larger, we're always um, fighting against uh, how can we spread the word within our big organization. It might be easier in smaller city councils. You're closer to people, but here it's not the case. I have another question about the presentation. You were speaking about the, the volume, but I feel so curious if you could give an example, maybe, about some of these citizen proposals that uh, were done with the collaborative process. Uh, so, what type of ideas were proposed? And these ideas get into something specific? So, if you could give an example or something. Yeah, yes, thank you. Well, yeah, regarding some results of the proposals that we got uh, and the transport that we were speaking to improve the transport to get to the area, the um, cycling paths, so you could just uh, cycle along the way. Also, having more uh, also pathways for for the people um other places for packing parking the bikes adapting it to people with uh, reduced mobility add uh, some uh, green paths, same green areas more trees incorporate uh, alternative uh, energy there were also some ideas regarding what would be the equipment of these areas to have public toilets, uh, to have uh, something in case that there was an emergency, for example, 
um, to have the safety stations is what we call them different stands um, so the children can play as well so i'm mentioning so many of them um but i'm still uh, there's a show i'm ones that i am missing other spaces to the sports for pets that um, there are proposals that um, could be understood uh, within different aspects of the different uses that the spaces could get Sorry, no, I'm interrupting you. No, go ahead, please. I was saying, like, everything you're saying, it's uh, something that can be offered for the organizer. In the future, they will implement these. But it's interesting that many of the things that came up is, are things that are you already see in other public spaces of the city. This relationship with the native plants um, matters uh, issues related to accessibility. So this reflects what's been happening in the transformation of public spaces and green spaces of the city. And we have to speak about this legitimization of the public policy. So it's about things that we already know. We've been working in this line. We thought to the path that we are taking regarding the changes that we may have in the city. Thank you. Another question. Since you were speaking about this process, it's been very intense, but um, I guess uh, it wasn't very long in the time. I'm not sure short or long what we would be, but uh, it's been like done nearly simultaneously at the project to the project of uh, approval so legally i don't know how how the plan was designed if it was just a modification of the plan if it was an amendment is if it's other thing that's more specific so um regarding the timings it looks like the process was parallel to the beginning of uh, the work so there wasn't a big margin to change the decisions. So I was thinking like, obviously it's a project, but if you already have the project legally approved, then obviously it's just, um, it's like the two steps, the uh, first two steps of participation is information. And then, okay, let's just speak about this. Let's see what we can do. So my question is, was it parallel? or it was prior to the approval process of the transformation process. So I guess the, all of us here, the ones who are thinking about this participation and the ones who are really working on this participation, we always have this, we always have this kind of tension. I mean, participate to inform or am I really going to expose myself so the citizen can uh, decide. I'm not sure if this either is what they were, but let's be there and tell me, hey, um, hey, this is not right. But of course, legally, if the project has already been approved, then legitimacy as a participation, then it's more is reduced. I don't know. I don't really know. It's a question. So it's something that uh, usually happens. So I would like to know about the timings because it's a macro project and there and then there are little projects in it. So for maybe for the macro, macro project, that's already there, but then there's more margin for the little ones. I think that's very interesting. And from a cooperative perspective, I was thinking in uh, a part of Madrid that it's called Marit Rio, like river, but obviously you can't compare it to the Plata River at all. Uh, but um, there is a transformation process. So, because we want to extend this Madrid Rio. So, maybe also to speak to the town hall and say, okay, so we need to be part of this process, but uh, if you get to the general direction of infrastructures and you say, no, this is it. Uh, do the project. I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking. And to, obviously to learn in these processes. 
it's great. Your question is great, I think. So, obviously, we could have gone, uh, we could have uh, had a look back, even farther back. But the first step before getting started, we need to make the decision of having this relationship with the water. This was a decision that the government made and say, okay, now we're going to start working for to change this space and obviously understanding the needs of the people to have the public spaces of the city. And as you're saying, so the works started in parallel. So it was nearly, nearly in parallel. So the work started is like the girls were saying before. It was the long term. It wasn't the long term. It was uh, because the plan was very big. We wanted to kind of read it. So what started, it was the biggest part of these works. So because otherwise in technical uh, questions, it is true that first they have to level up. So the project was tall, was spoken about, but nothing had started. There wasn't even a, a tractor moving the, earth, the land. But what they were doing is they were leveling up for these planes. And then the processes, the smaller processes in these micro processes that we're speaking, then they will see more places. It will be more binding the people's decision. Today, what we wanted was before closing everything, before people get to know, and not create false expectations or, or the lies that uh, obviously they were trying to find, maybe trying to add some issues that it wasn't supposed to be the way it happened. So um, to inform this process, but also to listen. This is what we're saying, that it wasn't biding. We wanted to listen, but obviously what we understand like what Maka was saying, like they knew the path we were following. So obviously some things arose that were very interesting actually in the micro processes that then we could see. We could see things that we knew that were hand in hand, but uh, it, it wasn't anything that changed so 180 degrees. So. It was, for example, uh, to cycle in this place, or this is why we need the cycle paths. So it's things like this. And it was hand in hand with what was happening and what had to do with the policies that were already being implemented. So obviously all the process was to inform the works started and in these little times for the extension because obviously these uh, these places are very big so it requires a lot of effort so obviously we're going to be working there because here it makes more sense that uh, we need to be uh, listening to the children, obviously, because then we need to know what they want, what they will have. And for example, we played games about these topics and then think about it together when we have uh, some of the groups and then go effectively there. And if there's another space for like uh, athletes, maybe uh, sports people, the people who are interested in doing sports to decide, um, then they had other ones to decide what was the best for them. So, so yeah, this is what was been happening. And let's see how much of this process is to inform and then how to actually act on it. But uh, it was important to get started like this. Yes, so an answering Luis's question about how we make it operational, how we make this uh, process operational, obviously the direction is very big, but the team for participation is around 12 people. So um, we have different roles. 
and uh, we've got a team for implementation so the ones who are in the dynamic of contacting the neighbors the ones who are opening the questions and then obviously we were working with the anthropology direction and they had very valuable assets and ideas so we could do it without having to go to other um, external agents because it's important for us to do it ourselves in cooperation or what they have to do in the processes so i think it's important beyond the fact that uh, the area to to take uh, meetings and the questions that will be important but it's also very important for us that in these uh, meetings we have the technical areas that tomorrow will implement these public uh, public policies and to somehow just the clear the doubts we may have and i think it's important to say that whenever this process is something that we do together with uh, who we're working with uh, because it's a process that uh, if they need these areas they're responsible to implement these public policies yeah and i would like to add something and that has to do with something that you mentioned before which is uh, how do we find uh, how do we organize the team of uh, participation according to the moment of the year so how we do it what do we get with this culture of how do we have a relationship with the areas so there's a team that's in charge of implementing the participatory processes there's another one in charge of the link with the areas and is the one knocking at their door like hey these things happening so we've got uh, these public policies what we're doing about this but is who's behind the areas regarding their uh, participation and saying like yeah we want to do this uh, we want to be in this participative process so this team thought to be bound to these parts of the government in these public policies there's another one implementing and then there's another one who's doing all the reporting all the analysis because this is important as well so it's uh, in order to create it so also thinking about the prior processes and trying to design a report so they can work in their uh, public policies so I think it's important to see if we have this contraction thinking about this design different ways and this gave us uh, great results thinking about this way Uh, today I'm asking a lot and so I've got a doubt uh, regarding to, to finalize the process you're speaking about uh, and this is um, the learnings that you mentioned in a very big project for the citizens that can feel a bit uh, um, far behind because it's a long-term results the ones you will see so something positive something negative you've done and now if you could face it uh, in a similar project uh, what would you do uh, would you do the same what would you change i think well it's a bit what we have mentioned regarding the segmentation in areas so somehow they could get to different areas of the city as uh, uh, one time was saying like it's a city that's uh, has got south and north so when we think about this project i think it's interesting to have uh, this call this particular call for uh, all these areas i think that uh, it's a representative and we achieved the goal and it was a good learning 
who, as uh, one was saying, and we can rethink about these strategies. And so, uh, what you were saying, Luis, about macro and micro, is would we have the best? Uh, and but it's, it's still, we still talk about it, and I don't know if, it's, if there's a correct option. It depends on the project and the goal of the project, because we want to participate, make the citizens participate. That we were doing when expressing the processes. So this is the moment to open it to the citizens. This is the moment and with the what to devise. So I think that um, beyond other matters regarding the calls, the learning of the different articulation is two secretaries that are part of the different directions. Long meetings with the many people. And I think, well, I think this is what we can get because that question, the matter in these meetings, like the ones that are saying, like um, the ones doing it particularly, the projects I could do, others one will say, um, let's get started with the works um, and it's a great moment to do a diagnosis. So um, it's more or less our function in these spaces to advise and accompany in the citizen participation and um, if not, if is that path that uh, Sophie was speaking about, it's a process with the citizen, with the river in this great uh, plan. And today we were tackling these projects uh, that uh, are just the public policies. Uh, in what is Park Salguero, that's one of the projects that we have been doing. Well, here it makes no sense, like Marta was saying, to have this diagnosis and action meeting because it's already happening and there can be another things, but um, is the best device to be involved, to get the citizen involved and um, have a path that they ca can have some information, the architect, and then solve any doubts, be part from the implementation of the public policy. And we are considering it in our framework as participation. So what you were mentioning about this macro and micro, not with one answer of what's best and what's right, but to, to always ask ourselves um, when tackling these participation pro, uh, processes. Well, 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 like, uh, like Helena was saying, like as we have said before with this macro, micro, and this vision that I think it's very interesting. And I would love to go to Buenos Aires to see it. So we have to organize something so you can show it to ourselves uh, to show us this process because it's different scales that uh, all things that we don't really know about. And that's why it's surprising as well to see the, the dimension, the capacity that you have. Uh, this is a, a great learning we get from you. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you all the direction in general. I loved the name of the general direction of anthropology, urban anthropology. I think that name is just brilliant. I'm just going to copy that because it's this anthropology vision of the government. But uh, in the own name, I think it's just wonderful because it's, it just tells you what it is. Yes, uh, obviously, is what they say is uh, this participation. So to be close to people, to be in this anthropology side. So you're also wizards with the language. We have to learn from you so much. Uh, we need to learn more because they reflect uh, everything that's behind it. So again, thank you very much uh, for participating here and we have a very intense month on the 14th. We'll have another workshop about uh, citizen participation and urban participation from a 
national perspective, uh, national calling it Spanish. So uh, thinking about the procedures of participation, how when you try to insert those processes, the consequences it may have. And uh, I think that's a very interesting vision of the stubborn reality that we are facing. So we'll uh, we'll uh, tell you about it. Um, you can see it on the website as well and in the newsletter. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Good morning for you too. Thank you.